Hello everyone, this is Angelo, and today um, I'm going to show you guys how I do my uh, Wabi Kusas. Um, basically, it's a type of art that uh, involves uh, plants and, you know, basically having, having them half uh, submerged and half immersed. So, uh, yeah, let's get this started. First, I've got just some regular soil. Um, you can get gardening soil, potting soil, uh, anything that's pretty much just cheap or whatever, you know, just get that. And um, you'll also want some dolomite, which I have here. And uh, this is just basically dry plant fertilizer and potash. Uh, I believe you can get all of these at like um, Home Depot or like Lowe's any kind of home improvement store basically. Uh, another thing that I have is red clay, it's red pottery clay. Um, it's also known as Mexican clay, it's also known as terracotta clay, and uh, I got this from Michaels and this is the box that it comes in with, or it comes with. Uh, it's 10 pounds and I believe it was about nine dollars. Um, you can get that uh, you could probably get a smaller one. I use this for my um, dirted tank. So it's a great source of iron. So that also helps keep plants red. And it's nice and... <clears throat> and well, I guess it, it, it's clay, so it releases pretty slow in the water. Alright, so there's that. I've got some Sirius Stone. And some... I think this is Madrona. Or it might be Manzanita Driftwood. And I've got my container with uh, substrate. This is just, you know, your run-of-the-mill aquarium substrate. Uh, I just had this laying around, and I liked the, the nice neutral color. It's brown. So, yep. Then I've got some water. Uh, I've got a fork, just for mixing all these things in. And the soil. And thread. And... Uh, I have two plants here that I'll be using for the uh, Wabikusa, and I've also got some submersed plant growth there. I've got just various stem plants that are in there. Uh, I don't know if you can really see, but there's some Rotala indica in there, Bacopa, there's some um, mermaid weed. Uh, I think there's like a tiny, tiny sprig of Christmas moss, or it could be Java java moss um so yeah basically any kind of stem plant so i'll just set those aside for now uh i've got tweezers and scissors these will be really really useful once you're making the wabikusa ball and then i believe this is the last thing this is um sphagnum moss which that's what you put uh, over the ball, basically, to surround it. So, let's go ahead and get started here. What I usually do is I put just the, the soil in a little container, and I take the clay and I take tiny, tiny pieces, like, you know, just like that, just pinch it off, kind of, and toss it in. And that just kind of helps distribute the clay everywhere. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right. So next, I'm going to add um, pot ash or pot ash. It's just a really fine powder. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. I don't add that much. So about that. That's probably a teaspoon right there. Probably do the same thing for the plant uh, plant fertilizer. It's about you know that which is good. And the dolomite. Probably 
add a little more. Okay. Stir these in a little bit. Break any big clumps of dirt if there's any. Next thing you want to do is add the dirt into a plastic bag. Kind of make sure it's all clumped in one corner. probably add maybe half of uh, the cup here. Okay, now you just want to mix the soil so that it kind of turns into like clay almost. So basically the clay that you added in there will help keep that um, texture-ish. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Um, consistency, texture, something like that. So you just want to keep squeezing the soil, let that water get in there. And if it's still dry, um, just add more water, but add, you know, just small amounts. Because the last thing you need is mud, and you don't want mud, you just want a nice wet soil. So I'm going to continue to do this. It'll probably take maybe 10 minutes or so of squishing around and letting all the um, stuff in there mix. So I'll go ahead and just mix this for a bit and I'll get back to you. Alright, so I've been mixing this soil and just pressing it really hard just to kind of get things nice and dense. Uh, you'll, you'll be doing that a lot during this, um, so your arms will be pretty tired. Uh, I know mine are. <laughs> so, okay, now you've got you know, nice wet soil. It has everything mixed in. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and put that back out. You can kind of see how it just literally just takes place or takes shape and uh, doesn't really do anything. Um, I think that's the best consistency that you can have for the soil. So you just kind of mat it down. It's almost like mud, but it's it keeps its shape basically, and that's what you want. So the first thing you want to do is make your ball. Let's grab you know, a nice handful. Squeeze it really tight. Get uh, most of that excess water out. Squeeze it really tight because you want it to be a dense clump of dirt. So okay that's about the size of a golf ball. Maybe a little bit bigger. Um, but I think that's usually a good starting point. Um, next, set that aside. We'll put this right here and then we'll get our sphagnum moss. And then you just kind of want to scatter that around like so. And you basically want to cover the entire ball, the entire dirt ball, with the sphagnum moss. You want that really compressed in. Like you want the entire surface just covered with the sphagnum moss. Let's get 
big piece out. Keep compressing. All right, so you can kind of see there's like little patches, kind of like that, because I took off that big piece. Just grab some more um, sphagnum moss, kind of sprinkle that on top and continue to compress. And if you see more patches, just do the same thing, just add more sphagnum moss. Um, I've read people actually adding or mixing in the sphagnum moss into the dirt. Uh, so you can definitely do that. I find this is easier for me, I guess. So once you've got your ball, you can set that aside. Get some thread right here. We'll probably want a pretty long piece. So I've got about uh, two arm lengths of thread. make a little loop here and you want it to hug the ball so it goes around the entire ball. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I go the knot is on this side and I bring it around and I'll tie another knot here. And one more. And you do want to tie it on pretty tight basically nice and snug so you, the uh, thread doesn't go everywhere and then what you want to do is wrap thread around the ball as many times as you can and that just helps keep the sphagnum moss and everything else intact and uh, the great thing about using thread is that over time it will deteriorate and just kind of break off on its own So once you start getting closer to the end, what you want to do now is uh, you want to start overlapping the thread around and these will be your best friend for doing that. So you just kind of, let me see if I can get a closer shot here. I'm just going below an existing piece of thread and taking it, taking the, uh, the end, the other end, so it just kind of loops like that and I just go a different direction and then do that again so you're basically just weaving the thread under itself okay so I just keep doing that Thread also helps, you know, for placing the plants in. You kind of just put the plants underneath the thread and that'll just hold everything in place. Let's do one more here. Okay. Let's tuck this other end somewhere. All right, so now you've got your Waki Wabikusa ball with the sphagnum moss. And uh, the next thing you'll want to do is put, um, kind of drench it with water for a little bit. So I'm going to take water from my plants. And I'm going to dip the ball. And I'll let it soak for about three minutes. All right, so now that you've soaked your Wabikusa ball, um, it's, you know, it's pretty dense. Uh, so next part is putting in the plants. 
Um, I will do these plants first to kind of just show you how to do it. Um, if you have plants that kind of already have roots, that is generally a lot better. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to take the plant with my tweezers. Let me see if I can do this right. Uh, like that. And I'm just going to insert it into the peat moss. Or not peat moss, sorry, the uh, sphagnum moss. And that should hold it in place, basically. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this and hopefully it'll look nice. So this is some more Otala indica. And this one doesn't have roots, so I'm hoping that'll just kind of root down over time. Okay, so that's another one. Um, let's see here. I've got this really cool mermaid weed. Uh, it's also known as sawtooth hygro. You can kind of see that it's got two different leaf growth already. So this right here, I don't know if you can actually see that, but this stuff right here, I believe is the immersed growth, while the broader leaves is the immersed growth. Or it could be the other way around. Um, I just wanted to try this out with the uh, Wabikusa, so I'll put this guy in. So with this, I think I would just generally just place it in between the threads rather than placing it um, inside the moss just because it's pretty delicate. So I don't want to run the risk of breaking the stem. And you can see that the roots right here are uh, just kind of out and about. Um, I'm hoping that we'll just kind of find its way into the, the ball. So I've also got a tiny, tiny piece of java fern. Actually, it might be Christmas. Or, sorry, java moss. Or it could be Christmas moss. So I'm going to stick that somewhere where I can. Maybe here and hope for the best. This is a um, cryptocorn species, Lutea, I believe. Uh, it's pretty young. It still has, you know, really good roots. Um, I just kind of pulled this out of my aquarium because there's a lot of it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this inside and hopefully get the roots in there. So this will just kind of stick out of the ball. Okay, and I know I've got this little bulb, it's a, um, it might be a tiger lily, it might be a, just a red dwarf lily, something. It's so tiny, it's, uh, it's got two tiny leaves. I want to say that's a, um, dwarf lily, a red dwarf lily. 
I'm gonna, I don't know if this is gonna survive or not. Um, I'm just gonna try it out. Whoops, let's put that one back in. Okay, so I think this one is going to be done. I, I might add the, um, people call this baby tears. I know it's not baby tears. It's a type of foreground plant. Um, pearl grass. I don't know. There's so many common names for plants, but I think I'll add that later at a different time. So, you know, once you're done with your Wabikusa ball, you just kind of set it in somewhere like this. And I guess I'll just use this driftwood and hopefully this plant will kind of grow upwards and just kind of dangle through the driftwood here. Then I'm going to fill this up with water. Oops. I'll fill this up with water and um, usually you'll probably want to kind of cover it with plastic wrap um, just to keep the humidity high. And that'll help the submersed plants uh, transi or transition into immersed growth, basically. Or not transition, but um, it'll make it easier for your plant to grow immersed leaves. Um, so I will go ahead and fill this up with water, and I'll go ahead and make more of the Wabikusa balls. And basically, that's how you do it. I will take some pictures or maybe even a video of the finished product. Um, once I'm done. Okay, so this is going to be slightly different. It's going to actually contain um, terrestrial plants rather than having just aquatic plants. Um, so I'm going to, you know, I start with a bigger size ball. It's about the size of a baseball, I think. Uh, if you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually split this in half right down the middle okay and then I'm going to add this this is a type of palm uh, if I am not mistaken uh, it's known as parlor palm and I'll go ahead and snip some of these roots Polar palm, and I'll have it slightly indented in there. Okay, I've got that, and this is a type of uh, fern, if I'm not mistaken. It's called asparagus fern. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the roots out of this too, as well as trim the roots. And I'll have this spaced like so. that and I'll go ahead and add the other half back on and the trick here is to squeeze really really hard for a while just kind of get the seams to blend back in and I think it's that clay that just really helps blend everything back in together okay, just pinch the seams here one and you just want to keep forming it into a ball again and that's as far as or as that's how trust as far as terrestrial plants are concerned uh, that's good but since we'll be adding more aquatic plants on here um, we'll go ahead and do that so the next thing is to add that layer of spag uh, sphagnum moss. So let's put some more of that here. Sprinkle this here. Let's 
put that apart. Put that on there. Really squeeze that as tight as you can. There's like these really big clumps that I don't necessarily like, so I just take them off and I just kind of re-clump everything back together. Okay. Let's get some thread. So you're going to want a really, really long piece. I don't know how long this is going to take, so I'm just going to let the thread kind of come off in the spool as I go. So. Second time here. Okay. And you want to wrap around. Now, because this has, you know, plants sticking out of the, the sphere, the, the ball, it's going to be a little bit trickier, but definitely not impossible to wrap the thread around. You just kind of have to work really slow. So, here's my thread. There's really no right or wrong way to wrap this, um, just as long as the sphagnum moss is nice and secure on the, um, the ball. definitely want to at least go in different directions just so that it allows the, uh, the thread to really keep all that moss, that sphagnum moss in place as much as possible. And, you know, the more thread you have on there, the easier it is to attach plants onto it. Let's keep doing that. I think that's good. So I'm just going to cut the thread, maybe give or allow like four inches or so. Then I'll do the same thing here. I'm just kind of weaving this thread under the other pieces, the under layers of the thread, just so that it keeps it in place. It also helps to uh, make sure that it's nice and taut, just so that it doesn't unravel itself, so to speak.
Okay. So now that that's kind of all nice and bally, um, I'm gonna dip this in water as well, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so we have the second one done. Um, it's basically uh, basically this is all the other plants that I have in my little container. Uh, you can see the pro weed or um, baby tears or I don't know what it is um, right here. We got the bacopa kind of hanging on. Uh, we got Ludwigia repens on both sides there, and uh, there's also some kind of dwarf hair grass up towards the top right here. Um, I don't know if that's going to survive or not, but we'll see. And we got some Marsilia Minuta, I think. I am so bad at pronouncing names, but that's, you know, it's a nice foreground plant. I mean, I'm curious how that's going to look. Uh, and so that, that's your, that's my Wabi Tusa ball. Um, I will probably try and get some weekly photos. I'll get up a, or set a journal thing going on, and um, I'll post that on, on Washington Fishbox. So uh, if you're on there, feel free to follow me there. Um, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe, and happy planting!